Hi, my name is Victoria Broder. I'm a senior Bachelor of Arts major in Applied Studies at Kennesaw State University. For this College of the Arts undergraduate research forum, I will be discussing the research that I have conducted over cross-training techniques, particularly focusing between the styles of musical theater and classical voice. Over these four years, I've had the privilege of working with two amazing voice faculty, which includes Todd Wedge, who's a voice professor in the School of Music, and Amanda Morgan, who's a voice professor in the theater department. Both professors Todd Wedge and Amanda Morgan have acted as my facilitators for this project and have provided me valuable tools and advice to aid me in my research. This presentation is still a work in progress, but I will be presenting it as a performative lecture as my senior capstone to finish off my degree at Kennesaw State. I chose to conduct my research over cross-training and voice because I've always been passionate about both musical theater and classical styles of singing. Often teachers advise their students to focus their time and energy into one style of singing rather than multiple. That way they can really build upon the foundations of technique and improve much faster rather than becoming overwhelmed by the different techniques and approaches that other styles of singing call for. When students are approaching middle and high school, they're given the option of either joining choir or their theater program. When students take the route of joining choir in their middle and high school, they're exposed to Allstate, which allows them to learn the different 24 Italian arias, and they learn how to sight read, which is primal in learning how to really become a true musician, teaching them the art of rhythm and musicality. When students go to the theater program in their schools, they learn how to really act, and they're also exposed to different music styles, such as Golden Age, which includes like Carousel or Oklahoma, and to Contemporary, which would be like In the Heights or Little Shop of Horrors. All of these are great skills for theater majors because they're able to learn how to become a effective actor and really understand what they're singing and what they're trying to express to their audiences. As a BA student, I was given the flexibility to create my own degree, catering to my own interests and what I was hoping to study in these four years. I declared a second major in theater as well as a dance minor, so I was able to ultimately create a BFA program. Being a part of all three programs was a life-changing experience for my undergraduate studies. I gained insight and perspective from professors from all three programs, and it really made the puzzle pieces come together. For two years, I studied strictly music, and I was able to improve exponentially as a musician. But I wanted to fulfill my dreams of becoming a crossover artist and understanding all of the work that goes into being able to do it all. When I declared a major in theater, I was put into a vulnerable place because it was something new. It was something that I had never done before. It was uncharted territory for me and I felt excited but scared at the same time. It was an experience that because I opened myself up, it changed me completely as an artist. Musical theater has become increasingly popular over the past few years. When the pandemic hit, live theater was put on pause, which required us to come together as a community to figure out a solution so that we could still enjoy live theater. We were able to live stream past shows and seasons, as well as having the opportunity to work in masterclasses with famous performers from Broadway and that were much more experienced. As a result from the pandemic, the music industry changed exponentially, which is scary for musical artists because they're wondering, what's my next step? What can I do to make myself more marketable? Because you spent so many years in school training to do a certain thing. And when you're out of school, you're thrown into the professional world and you're like, how can I make opportunities for myself? How can I make this performing profession successful for me? The title of my presentation today is Crossover Legacy, Passing the Baton of Crossover Technique in 2022. The belt quality stems from the chest, 
which echoes that of more of a screaming or a shouting sensation to the voice. The mixed voice quality has much more of a tilted sound, which has a healthy balance between both the head voice and the middle voice. The operatic voice quality comes from much more of a technical standpoint to a classical approach. And it comes from the head and only when needed, it weaves in a little bit of mixed of the middle voice and chest voice only when needed. And then the speech sung voice quality stems from your speaking voice, just as it sounds. If you have more of a mixed heady voice like me, then that's the space that you'll be accessing to really utilize that speed, the true speech sung quality that you naturally have. Versus if you have a lower voice, then you'll take more from the chest as needed. It just depends on how you are and how you are physiologically. And the final voice quality that I'll be talking about is pop rock. This style has become very popular over the past few years with musicals such as Beetlejuice and Rent containing this voice quality. It sounds a lot like what you hear on the radio. What helped me a lot in my research was this one book called The Cross Training in the Voice Studio, A Balancing Act. This one was written by Norman Spivey and Mary Saunders Barton. This book was very helpful and it has all of the different approaches to cross training. One of my favorite parts about this book is near the end of the book, it has all these different lists of repertoire depending on your voice style, voice type. And it's honestly such a great tool for young singers and artists to read just because it gives you so much advice on how to approach crossover if you're new to it and it tells you all of the upsides because famous singers such as Renee Fleming and Kristen Chenoweth and Kelly O'Hara they all started in one place but then they all transitioned to the other side of music. Kelly O'Hara was trained operatically but she performed in more musicals than anything. And just in this past year, she was invited to perform Despina in Cosi Fantuti. Kristen Chenoweth received her opera masters at Oklahoma City University, and she was trained classically, but she also appears on Broadway as Glinda the Good Witch in Wicked. Just like all of these artists, they're trained in one area, but because of their useful training and teachers, they're able to do it all and they can switch automatically depending on what they're auditioning for, what they're asked to do, and what opportunities there are out there. This is one of the best pieces of advice that I have to singers when they're trying to figure out what their next step is. If you've been trained classically or solely musical theater wise, I think it's a great way to really venture into a new world and to open yourself up to new opportunities and a new way of thinking. In addition to reading the cross training in the voice studio book, I also read journals of singing on the Nats website that pertain to cross training and accessing different vocal qualities and how they work in the voice. In addition to reading the cross training in the voice studio book, I also read journals of singing on the Nats website that pertain to cross training and accessing different vocal qualities and how they work in the voice. In this first piece that I performed, it was Mr. Snow from Carousel, which is a golden age musical. In this piece, I displayed more of an operatic tone with more of a heady voice mix, but I would say majority of it stemmed from more of the operatic voice quality.
piece is Someone Gets Hurt from the pop rock musical Mean Girls. I exemplified more of a speech song quality in this voice quality, but later on in this video, you'll hear a different clip which exemplifies one of the other voice qualities I was discussing. Yes, I'm perfect. in the piazza. In this clip, I produced a more tilted sound with a head dominant mix quality. someone gets hurt from the pop rock musical Mean Girls. In this specific clip, I exemplified more of a pop rock quality with a belt quality mixed in as well. is the girl in 14G. I posted this one in its entirety because it's the epitome of crossover singing. It includes operatic voice quality, a jazzy vocal quality, and mix. Even belt, so it has almost all of the vocal qualities checked off on the list, and it's a great choice for people that are starting to go into crossover singing. It's a difficult piece, and it allows you to really grow and figure out how to find those different voice qualities in your specific voice. Just moved into 14G, so cozy, calm, and peaceful. Heaven for a mouse like me. With quiet by the laceful, pets are banned, parties too. I'll put up with poo 
for tuning into my presentation. I really hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to continuing my research in crossover training for singers and I can't wait to present this for my senior capstone project at the end of the semester. Thank you.